They say you can't judge a draft class until five years after. I disagree. So let's talk about the Dallas Cowboys <laughs> draft class next. You are Locked On Cowboys, your daily Dallas Cowboys podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. This episode is brought to you by Hillsdale College. Go right now to hillsdale.edu slash locked on to enroll. There's no cost and it's easy to get started. Welcome back. I am your host, Marcus Mosier. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosier. Joining me today, as always, is Lane McCool. You can follow him on Twitter at McCoolBCB. On today's show, we're going to be discussing the Dallas Cowboys 2024 draft class. Where or how have these players have played so far? What our expectations are for them going forward? But Lane, let's start with the offensive line. Tyler mm-hmm. Guyton, Cooper BB, two rookie uh, starters on the offensive line for Dallas. How do you think those two have performed so far? I think it's been kind of what we expected, right? That it was going to be, you know, rough going. I mean, look, I think the expectation, you know, with this, these two guys always came with an eye towards the, the first part of this season, right? We, I think we all obviously knew what the schedule was going to be. And, you know, even going into the draft knew that there was a very high likelihood that the Cowboys were going to have two rookie offensive linemen, coming out of that draft that we're going to have to go into that buzzsaw of a schedule the early part of this season. Uh, so I think that was, you know, baked in since before Tyler Guyton's name was even called uh, uh, in the first round that, that these guys were going to be likely starters and be going against a, a very difficult series of defensive line groups, especially early in the season. So having said all that, I, I think that that expectations have been right kind of where we expected them at that point, right? That that they have looked like rookie offensive linemen looking uh, uh, playing against a, a very talented series of defensive lines, and, and it's been a real struggle at times. It's been uh, a solid play at times, but I think that's what you see when you have rookie offensive linemen is a kind of inconsistency that is you hope as the season goes on starts to kind of steady out a little bit. And I think we've seen that a little bit so far. Obviously, Guyton has missed the last two games because of, well, the game and a half. Yeah, or is yeah. It, yeah uh, because of because of the injury. Uh, and Cooper has been, the, the BB has been the starter for at center since the uh, game one. So uh, we've seen, I think, progression from these guys. I, I think, obviously, especially for Guyton going week one against Miles Garrett was an incredibly difficult task. I thought he handled that mostly well. Uh, I think it's been kind of up and down since then. He certainly has given up his share of pressures. He's got a lot of holding calls, but I, I, I again, like I don't think that that any of that is really surprising when you're considering what what they were up against and who they were and all those things. Uh, I think that there's been times when we've had higher expectations from them. What we saw training camp, we saw we, we got excited about the way they looked, and I think that they they have looked good. Uh, but I think it's been mostly up and down, and I think that that's really what you should expect from these kind of higher, even the highly r- rated guys that are coming out in the first through third rounds. You know, it just takes a little while to get to get used to the speed of the NFL, get used to playing with the guys around you, and 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 physically trying to move grown men off the football uh, after you know kind of trying to do so against eighteen to twenty year olds uh, for the last two or three years. I want to dive in a little bit more to Tyler Guyton, but. Landon, I am of the belief that you can kind of tell where a player is going or where they're headed after mm-hmm. six or seven games. Like it doesn't take long for most of these players. And I'll give you an example. Last year for the 33rd team, I had to write after week six, which rookies are falling short of expectations. And I think I wrote eight rookies. Seven of those eight guys are continuing to struggle in year two, right? Like most of the time, these rookies, you, you know, right away. I think Tyler Smith is a good example, right? Tyler Smith as a rookie, we know was really raw. We knew he was going to commit a lot of penalties, but he stepped in at left tackle and performed well above expectations. And now we're in year three. Tyler Smith is clearly the best offensive lineman on the team, and he's a future all-pro player. I'm not saying I'm I'm giving up on Tyler Guyton or Cooper Beebe, but we haven't seen anything like that yet from those these two guys. Sure. I also think that that it's 
they had a tougher assignment than than Tyler Smith did. It feels like uh, I, I I will uh, I, a playing assignment. Maybe not the actual difficulty of what was being asked for because Tyler Smith was asked to move to left tackle. You know, days before he. Uh, uh, they started yes. practicing for week one. So that, that was a very, very difficult assignment. Uh, I do think that, that who the, the Cowboys have played, you know, uh, plays a, a huge thing in here. Um, sure. And I don't, but I don't disagree. Like, I don't disagree that you can kind of get a sense of maybe not, you know, exactly their, their full career early in the game, but at least what sort of track or trajectory they're on to kind of hit that. that, that. I, I guess I just look at like the Cowboys first round pick history, right? Like CD Lamb was productive right out of the gate. Zach Martin was a, I think an all pro right away. Uh, Tyler Smith was really good. And the guys that struggled like a Mozzie Smith looked pretty rough. I, again, not saying that Tyler Guyton is a bust or anything like that, but I think the expectations that maybe we had or fans had that he would step right in and be a average NFL left tackle. Like this just hasn't happened yet. No, but I, I think he'll get there. Like, I mean, I, I do think that that's the thing is that like, this is probably what we're seeing here with, with BB and Guyton is probably the normal trajectory for an, for an offensive line. I mean, even the first round, like we've just been frankly, very spoiled, you know, yes, with, with a lot of our first round picks. Uh, I do think that, you know, we are talking about a late first rounder, right? We even talked about it at the time, like mostly really a second round type player. Right. And then, and then a, a guy who was a third round pick. So uh, I do think that this, and, and, and again, I, I will point out that the assignments that they've had are incredibly difficult. So uh, to, to, I do think that, sh- that we saw some things from them. I get some very good players that gives you a lot of hope that they're going to get better and that they are, that they are, at least belonging, you know, to be here. Uh, but I think that the the question still is, and as it was before the season, how quickly can they kind of smooth out that learning curve and get to a level that is uh, productive and not a detriment to their team? I think we're still on that curve as as we speak right now. But I, I think the, the obviously the next big kind of check in point is this week going out coming out of the bye. What did they do over the bye to kind of improve their situation? I know with Guyton, we got to deal with the health situation as well. Yeah. But what what do these guys look like coming out of the bye? I think that's going to be a big kind of uh, uh, high watermark is what you're hoping for in, in the kind of the trajectory of their career. Now, I will mention that both Tyler Guyton and Cooper Beebe are both playing new positions, right? Tyler yeah. Guyton was a right tackle last year. Now he's playing left tackle. Cooper Beebe was a left tackle and left guard, now playing center. So – We should give them a little bit of the benefit of the doubt compared to like Tyler Smith, who was a left tackle at Tulsa before moving to guard, but at least he had a full season, right? Um, Even someone like Tyron Smith, when he came out a long time ago, was a right tackle at USC. And in his first year with the Cowboys played right tackle, right? right. So most of these times, these guys aren't moving, you know, across the formation or anything like that. So we should give them a little bit more leeway than, Maybe we have so far, but I think it's, I think it's also fair to be a little not discouraged, but wanting a little bit more. I think you would hope that these guys would play at a little bit better level so far. Yeah, I mean, I think this is kind of where I expect it to be honest. I, I think if anything, for me, where I feel like I, I'm a little bit uh, not discouraged, but like uh, surprised, is I feel I felt like the Cowboys probably should be giving them a little bit more help than they have been. It, it does feel like at times that they are kind of throwing them out there without training wheels, uh, you know, and I, I guess you have to do that in the course of calling an, an NFL offense. And I understand well, that. Here's part of the problem is that the teams they faced the last few weeks, whether it was Aiden Hutchinson, TJ Watt, Kayvon Thibodeau, Brian Burns, like a lot of those guys were lining up on Terrence Steele side. Mm-hmm. So they felt like they needed to help steal out. And that has put those guys in some tough one-on-one situations. And I get, I don't know if that's going to change because this week, Landon, it's Nick Bosa on that side of the formation. Yeah. I mean, that's why you need to start seeing some of the kind of market improvements for some of these guys. And again, it's, it's why when we talked about the fact that, that Guyton was out this week, uh, that we were like, the, we really hope that that's just all injury based because you cannot. This guy just needs snaps. He needs to yep. s- see the field and play and just kind of see it all and ingest it all. Uh, because right now it's it's an experience issue more than it is anything. 
Um, and and again, like they're getting a fa- face full of experience from some of the best in the NFL the, the first you know eight weeks of their NFL careers. So uh, uh, it's it's only going to continue this week against the, the 49ers. All right, let's go on the defensive side of the ball and talk about the rookies over there, including Martian Nealon and Kalen Carson. We will get to that next. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. What's something that scares you? We're getting really close to Halloween. We all have our fears. Listen, I'm going to give you mine. I know it's maybe not the most manly fear, but I don't like mice. I, I just don't. I, whenever we catch one, or we catch a mouse in our, our trap. I always have my wife take it. I just don't even like dealing with them, right? It's not fun. It's one of my fears. Halloween gives us an opportunity to have fun with what scares us. So I think my wife is dressing up as a, a mouse this year for Halloween. So thanks to her. Uh, but what about those fears that don't involve big, scary things like zombies and ghosts? And mice therapy is a great tool for facing your fears and finding ways to overcome them because sometimes the scariest thing is not facing our fears in the first place and holding ourselves back. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give better help a try. It's done entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and you can switch therapists at any time for any reason at no additional charge. Overcome your fears with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LotDone today to get 10% off your first month. That is BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. This episode is brought to you by Hillsdale College. Hillsdale College is offering more than 40 free, that's right, free online courses right now, including Constitution 101, The Meaning and History of the Constitution, Introduction to Free Market Economics, The Great American Story, A Land of Hope, The Rise and Fall of the Roman Republic, and so much more. I've been taking a couple classes. It's so easy. You just pull up your phone. You can listen to a lecture. Plus, if you want to go deeper into some of these classes, you can get additional readings, quizzes, discussions, or just sit back and enjoy the lectures. Time is our most precious commodity, so don't waste it scrolling through the same mind-numbing content for hours and hours. Spend it improving yourself with Hillsdale College. Go right now to hillsdale.edu slash LockedOn to enroll today. There's no cost, and it's easy to get started. That's hillsdale.edu slash LockedOn to register. Hillsdale.edu slash LockedOn. Welcome back to the Lockdown Cowboys podcast. We are discussing the Dallas Cowboys rookie class from the 2024 draft. Lena, let's go over to the defensive side of the ball. This unit has been hit hard with injuries. Yeah. We've, we've only gotten got to see these guys play, I, I mean, in the case of Martian Nealon, 111 snaps. Kalen Carson, who was a week one starter, 153 snaps. How do you think the, the, the rookie defensive players have played so far? I mean, when they've been on the field, they've been pretty good. I, I thought that, you know, obviously we we had some hope that Nealon would be, you know, a, a, a have a bigger role because of the Sam Williams injury early in training camp. And then, you know, we saw Demarcus Lawrence, you know, get injured and and and, and more Nealon obviously was in order. And then obviously he gets hurt uh, and it really kind of put a, a damper on things. I mean, he was one of the guys that specifically you saw some positive things. You thought he was going to get a lot more opportunity. Um, you were excited to see him kind of grow in the opportunity. Uh, and then he had that opportunity just kind of pulled out from under him, which is really, really unfortunate because he, you just thought this was a really great chance for a guy that you felt like uh, didn't think it was too big for him. Like you felt like he was going to be able to get into this situation, provide you with uh, some some solid snaps while also kind of learning on, on, the, on the go. And look, I, I'm speaking of him like, like he's dead. He, he'll be back hopefully in the next few weeks, I think, right? Uh, let's say like three weeks probably, yeah. you hope. Yeah. Uh, so, so there's still lots of t- opportunity and lots of time for him to get back in and, and, and kind of grow and, and, and get a lot out of this rookie season. But, you know, it is unfortunate that he had to take a little break with the injury situation because you did feel like he was – uh, you know, doing the job well, filling in as well as you could expect for a rookie defensive end. It's a very difficult position to kind of come in as a rookie and have an impact on both sides, uh, 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 meaning both run and pass, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think you know, it's uh, Kalen Carson, very similar situation, came in, uh, was thrown into the fire because of an injury situation. I thought played admirably, you know, uh, early on in the season. 
uh, before he got injured. And then once he was injured, obviously it's, it's kind of held him out. It's, it's a shoulder situation. So it's really being uh, uh, comfortable kind of tackling again. That's what we have. We're waiting for, but considering that, you know, while he's been gone, they've, they've, they've basically had to rotate in a kind of a, 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 a grouping of, 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 of undrafted free agent, you know, a street free agent kind of guys that just to see, you know, who could take his spot. Uh, it will be great to see Kalen Carson kind of come back, not only for the depth of this team, but also again, much like Nealon, a guy that you felt like it wasn't too big for, you felt like he could go out there and give you productive snaps while also kind of, you know, leveling himself up uh, with all the, that extra experience that you were given. Yeah, and it sounds like he should be back this week. Now, Mike McCarthy didn't confirm that, but um, he was pretty close to playing last week. Yeah. Now you give him 14 days to get ready. I, I would assume he's going to play. We still don't know if Deron Bland's going to play. Mike McCarthy in his Monday press conference said it's too early in the week to know if Bland's going to play. Do we think Bland had some kind of setback? Because it sur- sure seemed like he had a good chance to play against the Lions, and now we're at, after the bye, and we still don't know he's playing? I, I I mean I don't uh, it maybe I, I don't want to rule that out but I also know that these foot situations are very difficult you yeah. know it's like it's yeah. it's it's very truly a day to day situation and and often considering he you know is not uh you know he didn't do he's not post surgery he's like trying to let it heal this is very much a uh uh you know uh, of how does your body feel how does your foot feel situation yeah. it's a pain tolerance issue so uh, I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know if he had a setback. I certainly am not going to deny that, no. but I also know that, that it is, this is one of those situations where, uh, it's not as linear as some, it's, it's a lot like a hamstring, you know, where, where it's like, you could take a step forward and then take two steps back suddenly and have a bad practice. So, uh, yeah, I do think that, uh, he is kind of working his way back, but I also know that it's a situation where they don't want to feel like they're rushing him back. And I, I have a feeling that even if he felt iffy about it against Detroit, they were like, nah, let's shut it down. We'll give him two more weeks. That'll give him lots of time to hopefully feel a lot better about it. Uh, uh, and, and we'll see exactly what we get on Wednesday, what, what kind of report we get. Yeah, we should also mention the Cowboys linebacker, Maris Leofau, uh, who has played quite a bit so far yeah. for a rookie linebacker, uh, 155 snaps. He's been up and down, hasn't been awful, hasn't been great. What have you seen so far? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, a lot of what the deal is with Maris is that, you know, he's playing behind a couple other guys that we've been excited about. I think Eric Kendricks has played really good football for the most part when he's been out there. I think there was some up and down stuff at points, but especially early, he played really well. And then we've seen, obviously, a a lot of really great stuff from Overshone. And then, I I mean, I think even despite the fact that his his snaps were down previous to last week. I thought Damone Clark was one of the only positive aspects of the defense last yep. week. And because of all that, you've just seen a lot, just very kind of spotty stuff of Maris Leofau, right? Um, and I think that he's, yeah, I think that when he's been on the field, he's been uh, he's been mostly good. I, I've definitely seen some stuff where uh, he, he didn't uh, you know react in time. He didn't quite get to the hole uh, fast enough, and he, and he couldn't get the tackle as a guy. Ran, ran through the hole and, and, and missed a tackle. But I've also seen him making plays. I've seen him you know, making t- tackles for loss and, and, and you know, as a blitzer and, and uh, affecting the quarterback and making big plays in the past game. So uh, I think it's been kind of spotty work just because they rotate these guys a lot. And I think they'd like a lot of the guys that are ahead of him and around him. You know, they, they really like Nick Vigil a lot, I think, mm-hmm. you know, so he's getting a lot of opportunity. And, and, and so I think that, what we've seen from Leofau is, 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 you know, kind of similarly up and down, you know, certainly doesn't look like he's lost out there or anything, anything like that. It looks like he belongs, but I also think that he's kind of sharing the stage right now with a couple other guys that the Cowboys really like and, and feel like are important for them to be on the field. All right. Uh, any, any thoughts on Brevin Span Ford or Ryan Flournoy? Guys at bottom end of the roster. Brevin Span Ford's played almost a hundred snaps. I, I wouldn't wouldn't be shocked to see both of these guys getting more snaps uh, on the other side of this, right? We saw Flo, Flo and I, Flornoy. It's not it's, there's no R, and I can't. Whenever I try Flournoy. to not say the R, Flornoy, it's it's it it really messes me up. But I do expect to see a little bit more of these guys uh, on the other side of things, maybe at the expense of of you know Brooks and or uh, uh, you know who knows Scooney or some whoever maybe. else. Uh, I, I think. 
So we'll. I think we're going to get more opportunity to see these guys just as they kind of get these younger guys more opportunities to see what they've got. Uh, but yeah, I think obviously, with, especially with Flournoy, is like, you know, he he had some opportunities. Obviously, a big fumble that 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 really was was tr- problematic. Yep. You got to see kind of consistent play from these guys if you're going to want to try to feed them more and more snaps. They've got to be able to handle the ones that they've they've been given. All right, let's talk about our expectations for the rookie class going throughout the rest of the season. What can we reasonably expect them to do? We will get to that next. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Hey, NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. You can get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. We've got two Monday Night Football games tonight. Go bet on... Maybe you think the Buccaneers are going to beat the Ravens at home. Tampa Bay is a three and a half point a home dog. That's a pretty intriguing line. And once you place your first five dollar bet, you're going to get two hundred dollars in bonus bets that you can use on anything, including will the Dallas Cowboys make the playoffs? Who's going to be the NFL MVP? I got to say it's probably Jared Goff for the <laughs> first seven weeks of the season. It seems crazy, but so much, so many great things that you can bet over on FanDuel. That is FanDuel.com, America's number one sportsbook. Welcome back to the Lots on Cowboys podcast. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. For your second listen, go check out the new Lots on NFL show. Two shows every single day. One in the morning with Tyler Rowland. One in the afternoon with Tony Wiggins for some real NFL talk. Download the podcast wherever you get your podcasts. All right, Landon, let's, uh, let's talk about expectations. What do you expect from this rookie class as we get into the second half of the year? Well, I mean, look, I mean, much like the, the expectations that we had for them early in the season, which was not necessarily a great projection, right? Uh, I, I'm hoping that, that the, my second half of the season predictions come true as well because I, I do anticipate that as these guys continue to get more and more snaps, I mean, I'm speaking – first mostly about the young offensive line obviously uh, as they these guys start to get more and more snaps you hope that that uh that that experience starts to kind of internalize a little bit and then you start to see the kind of players that these guys were in college show up a little bit more right as they start playing a little more naturally you see a little see a little bit more of the similar things that they've seen in previous uh in, in earlier games of the season they start to get a little more comfortable with what they're doing what they're being asked to do um, and they're, you know, they're, they're seeing the defense better. I, I think all those things will give uh, these guys more opportunities to kind of, again, play the, the game that they, they're used to playing in college, Feel, feeling comfortable enough that, that, that their personality starts to show up on the field a little bit more. You know, I, I think obviously for BB, we're, we're used to him putting guys in the dirt. We're used to seeing him bury guys. And I think as he becomes less timid in some of the, the his steps and some of the stuff, you start to see the kind of enforcer in the run game that we hope to see. That that's something that I think has really been missing uh, so far in his game. And then for Guyton, I think you know it's it's really just about finding consistency in his technique. That's the issue with him more than anything. Is that it's it's the same stuff that we talked about, right? It's 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 uh it's it's trying to reach its waist bending. It's it's yep. feeling that he's not uh, that he needs to make that first initial contact and doing so requires him to lean forward and get his hands on the guy and 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 I think as the season goes on as he starts to get more and more snaps you hope that the confidence will grow there that he can kind of be patient with his punch that will help unlock a lot of his power and kind of d- you know diminish some of the issues that he's had uh, and then on the defensive side I think right now it's about getting these guys healthy right like Neeland. Uh, Kalen Carson, they need to get back on the field in order to play. Leofau, I think, is is just going to be part of this rotation. And I think, again, another guy who, as the weeks go on, as he sees more and more, you expect him to be better. He'll start internalizing. He'll start studying himself on film, seeing where he's weak, and then improving those weaknesses into strengths. You know, those that's the trajectory you hope with these young guys that play early is that Look, it's going to be ugly. They're going to take their lumps. They're going to get penalties. They're going to make mistakes. They may even lose you a game or two, 
But the hope is, is that all that kind of earned battle testing that you get in the beginning part of the season with these rookies blossoms into something nice by the back end of the, of the season where not only are these guys not no longer kind of detrimental to your team that you're kind of dragging along, but they become the strength of your team, right? Yep. The weakness become the strength. And by the end of the year, you're seeing not just positive, but, but, you know, exceptional play from your, your top end guys that you drafted like BB and Guyton and, and Neyland. I, I just want to see improvement across yeah. the board, right? I, again, I'm going to reference Tyler Smith. Tyler Smith was fine the first 10 weeks of the season, but the final six, seven games of the year yeah. was awesome. And I, I believe I don't have this stat in front of me, but I believe he was like a top five offensive tackle in the NFL by PFF grade from like week 10 on during his rookie year. Again, I'm not expecting that from Tyler Guyton, but what I'd like to just see is you continue to get better and better every single week. And the Cowboys don't have to give you as much help, but they can leave you on an Island more and more frequently. And you're able to hold up and the same for BB and hopefully Nealon can get back and give you some solid play. Like just show me some improvement and get me excited. Cause even if this Cowboy season doesn't result in them making the playoffs, I need to be encouraged by this rookie class in order to think that this team can quickly get back to where they need to be. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and I think that that's again, another reason as to why we, you know, and it doesn't seem to be this way, but when there was, you know, whispers about the idea that this, offensive line change may be a more long-term thing that we were very adamantly against this because I think more important than the results of this season, to be honest, like, you know, we, we don't really know obviously how this is all going to play out, but it, almost as important, if not more important than, than the results of the season are making sure that these two young offensive linemen get all the experience they can, all the snaps that they they're able to, because you know, if, if this season doesn't turn out the way you want, you would rather still have all that experience of those guys to level up for next season uh, and, and kind of see what you've got. You want them to gain all the experience they can so that they can fold that into improvement for, for 2025. Yeah. Because I mean, you're looking at an offensive line in 2025, that's likely going to have a new starter at right guard, right? You don't want to have to feel like, okay, we have a weakness at left tackle. We've got a weakness at center. We've got a weakness at right guard because that's going to completely change how you, you view the entire offseason, right? So if BB and Guyton can prove to be functional starters. I just think it's going to give you a lot more hope, not only this year, but just moving forward about where your roster is at. That's Well, well and certainly this year, because here's the thing is that, the truth of the matter is, is that, you know, I think we spent a lot of the, the bye week trying to find ways to improve this team that actually will be meaningful in a way that make them contenders again. And if that's even possible, right, with with the roster that you've got or what's available on the street. And I think if you're looking to try to level up this team, the fastest and best way to level up this team is for those two young offensive linemen to start playing, you know, much better football because that that's, you know, a rising tide raises all ships in that situation, right? You get a better offensive line play. You control the ball better. You can run the ball a little bit better. That'll help your passing game. That'll help your defense. Uh, I, I think that, that these two young offensive linemen taking the bye week to kind of improve their game, that is probably one of the most important things on this team as far as the chances of, of actually improving the outlook for the 2024 yeah. season in the back end of this of the season. All right, that is it for today's show. We want to thank you for making Locked On Cowboys your first listen every single day. Make sure you check out the Locked On NFL for your second listen. Go follow Landon on Twitter at McCoolBCB. I'm at Marcus underscore Mocher. Check out the Locked On Cowboys channel on YouTube. Download the podcast wherever you get your podcast, and we will see you right back here tomorrow.